Welcome to Fair Game, I'm Christine Leahy. At the age of 12, my guest today became the first skateboarder ever to land a 1080 in competition. By age 18, he was a nine-time X Games medalist. Now he's 20 and a member of the first ever United States national skateboarding team. Next summer, he's hoping to compete in Tokyo at the 2020 Olympics. Tom Shar, so good to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So first of all, congratulations. You are on the Forbes list, 30 under 30, the sports list. How did you find out? Where were you? Um, my mom actually just told me. Uh, I think I was just sitting at home and she came in and showed me it and I was really excited. I uh, had no idea that was happening. They didn't tell me or anything like that. So uh, it was uh, really cool, yeah. <laughs> And you're significantly under 30. You're yeah. 20. <laughs> yeah. So you've accomplished quite a bit in yeah. just 20 just, years. Just, yeah. How old were you when you started skateboarding? Uh, I was like five, four, something like that. Uh -huh. Really young. Four or five. Yeah. Um, I also have heard that you had some famous neighbors. Yeah. And one of them might have had a part in you starting to skateboard. Yeah. Can you explain? Um, yeah. When I was younger, uh, pretty much I got into skating because my older brother skated. And... Uh, our neighbor was Kenny G in Malibu. Kenny G, the saxophone yeah, player. Yeah, saxophone player. Okay. And uh, his kids grew up and they got out of skating and they got over it, but they had a mini ramp still. Uh huh. So he decided, he asked us if we wanted it, and of course we said yes. So he just gave us the mini ramp, and then that wow. was kind of the start of, uh, I guess, our little skating career. Me and him would just go out there, me and my brother would go skate there all day long in front of in our front yard. You would skate and with Kenny G? No, 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 no. Oh. Just me and my brother. You and your brother? Yeah, Oh, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we've uncovered something no, from Kenny yeah, G today. Uh, yeah. Did you guys stay friends? Um, Kenny G? Yeah. No, I, I haven't talked to him, actually. No. Mm -hmm. Did he ever play the saxophone for you? No, never heard him, sadly. <laughs> so at the age of 12, you became the first person to complete this 1080, yep. right? Which I've seen it. It's insane. Uh, why did no one do this before you? Um, I don't know really. I mean, <laughs> I uh, I watched Sean White try it uh, when I was like seven, I think, at the yeah. X Games, and uh, he got really close to it, but he didn't land it. And uh, that wasn't really, I guess, what motivated me to try it because I was so young. I just was really excited to see that. Um, yeah. But um, I guess I got older and I kind of kept evolving through my skating and. Uh, I started doing a 900, which is like the one step below a 1080, and I landed a bunch of those, and I was like, well, maybe I could try. So 900, is that like the degrees of how many? Yeah, so that's like two and a half like full spins, spins. around. So yeah, you yeah. said, no, no, I need to do more, <laughs> like another yeah. half spin. I just thought about it, and, uh, and then as I was thinking about it, I went to this like trampoline place, which was kind of sounds weird, but it just helped me practice like the spins and okay. just getting used to kind of doing what it would be like in the air, I guess. And then uh, I actually went to go try it um, at this place called Woodward. It's a big skate facility. And I have a mega ramp there, which is like a really, really big uh, skate ramp. Uh -huh. And I was trying it, and uh, it actually just kind of worked out a lot better than I thought. And uh, it actually only took me like five or six tries, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it uh, just kind of happened, and it just worked really well. Now, do you get scared? Because I see you going up really, really, really high and then coming down really yeah. fast. Is it scary? <laughs> yeah, it is. Everything you try for the first time is always really scary, especially okay. I still get scared trying everything. You do? Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's um, you just kind of get over it, though. It's something you learn to deal with, and you kind of learn to face your fears and just kind of get comfortable with things you're not really comfortable with, and it's good for you, I think. But once you do it one time, then you're not scared anymore? Yeah, it's usually just the first time you try it. Wow. Just because it's, well, I mean, not always. If it's something really scary, then I'm still scared to try it every time. But usually it's just the first time you try it, and then you'll kind of get past the fear of it and get a little more comfortable. So you're not scared of the 1080 anymore? Uh, I mean, I haven't tried it in a while, actually. Oh. Yeah. Why not? Like, uh, I've just kind of gotten older and a little bit bigger, and <laughs> you can't do I it haven't, when you're I mean, I haven't really tried it in a while, honestly. So. Okay. But, um, yeah, I think it'd just honestly be a little harder than doing it when I was younger. It was just smaller, and I think it'd be easier for me to spin around faster. And yeah. All yeah. Um, also, something really cool. You fall so gracefully. <laughs> I've watched. I've watched you because you just kind of like slide down. You yeah. go on your knees. It looks like it would hurt a lot. Did you have to like practice the art of falling? Yeah, that's kind of the other half of skate. I mean, oh. yeah, probably more than half of skateboarding is falling because you're not always going to land everything. So yeah. you, you kind of have to learn how to fall the right way too. So it's kind of yeah. you get good at that, and then you're more comfortable or more confident to try harder stuff because you know you'll be able to fall and get out of it safely. So when your parents see you do this, are they terrified, supportive? Yeah. All, <laughs> all of the all, Yeah, all of the Okay. <laughs> do they ever say, maybe not that one, don't try this? Um, no, they, when I first started skating the mega ramp, which is the big ramp, uh, they were really scared about it. My mom would hate going with me because she wouldn't even be able to watch me skate. 
So she'd go with you and turn around? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I probably would do the same thing. And, um, yeah, they would go with me, though, and they were always really supportive. My whole family has been insanely supportive my whole skate career. My mom drove me to skate parks ever since I was, you know, five until I could drive. And uh, they're still really supportive until this day. So Do they ever great. say maybe tennis, golf, <laughs> let's try those things? Yeah, no, I mean, I played all the traditional sports when I was younger, played baseball and basketball and all that, but didn't stick with it. How did your life change after that happened? Because that blew up when you got the 1080. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, shortly after that, I went on the Ellen which was uh, okay. pretty wild. Yeah, Yeah. how was that? Uh, pretty crazy for a 12-year-old that didn't really know what to expect. Uh -huh. I mean, before that, I, w I was just a little kid that skated, and I mean, I didn't do anything like that. I didn't go on TV shows or anything, so it was really crazy for me, and all this stuff just kind of happened out of nowhere, and um, yeah, it was just, it was a lot of fun, though. I had a good time doing all of it. Did you kind of feel a moment when you started to become a little famous, people were recognizing you. Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, I'd go to the skate parks and people would be like, oh, can I take a photo with you and stuff? And uh -huh. I'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. And it was just, uh, I don't know, it was kind of crazy just uh, experiencing that because I remember when I was younger. I mean, still, I am younger and I look up to people and I remember going up to them and asking them for photos and stuff like that. So it's just, uh, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> How did the sponsors start coming to you? Um, I got my first sponsor. It's called Half Pint Skateboards when I was like 10, I think. 10. Well, it was a really small skateboard company. It was like cool. mainly for like little or like younger kids. Cool. That were gonna skate. No, it was the coolest thing ever for me when I was like nine or 10. That was awesome. Did you just get unlimited skateboards? Yeah, I just got free skateboards. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was really fun. When I was like, a kid. this is a good yeah, job. Exactly. I like this. And um, yeah, after that, I kind of just started doing more contests and started doing a little better and got more recognition. And uh, people started reading, like reaching out to me. and. Yeah, just kind of all took off from there. What was your first big one? Uh, Element skateboards, which oh. I'm still on today. Oh, you yeah. upgraded. Yeah, I did a upgrade. Bit. You also yeah. grew, so you probably yeah, needed true. a different skateboard. Mm -hmm. Did having all those sponsors um, add pressure to you to perform? Um, um, yes and no. I mean, I'd still be trying just as hard if I didn't have any sponsors. I mean, I'd still just feel as much pressure. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm competitive, I think, person-wise. And uh, every time I go to a contest, I get nervous. and get stressed out and you know really try and practice and get ready for it and everything so mm -hmm. I think either way I'd be um, I guess feel the pressure but um no it's they're really supportive though my sponsors they help me out a lot and help me get to the places I need to go and help me get to the contest that I need to be at so you've said that there is really no rivalries in skateboarding yeah. but there's only one winner well, yeah so how does that work <laughs> I mean there's just really not though we've uh, all known each other in skateboarding since we were all really young. We all grew up doing uh, contests since we were all little kids, and it's kind of one big family at this point. We just all traveled together around the world. Really? It's kind of what it seems like. Yeah, I mean, we've all we're all just really good friends. So it's just you see your friend do really well, and you're not you're not gonna be mad that your friend did really well. You're just gonna be really happy for them and go cheer them on and everything. Even though you compete against each other. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, if you if you don't think about it, we're really just skating together and having a good time, just like any other session that we would have together back home. So it's just, uh, it's just a contest. That's the, that's the only thing that's different. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.